Welcome back to What Are Two Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the 105 Lur FH18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG, and this one is located on the north eastbourne or northwestbourne, northeastbourne of El Halouf. And this one is under the command of Torment 4. Now, the 105 Lur FH is also known as the Leaf Blower or the Leffy. Uh, but what Hearty Noobs members know them as the Fifi La Pew Pew because she's French, she pews a lot <laughs> at the enemy and uh, well we just thought she, it's a better name than the Leffy. Uh, you can see it's got a mark of excellence on the barrel. Battle has commenced. Now this particular arty was designed and built on the chassis of the Char B1 and if you were lucky enough to go to Tank Fest this year you actually saw a Char B1 going around the arena. It came from the museum in Samur, uh, Museum de Blins, uh, Blins, and the French officers brought it over and they showed it to us and it was a magnificent tank to be driving around the arena. But uh, during the Second World War, the Germans took 16 of these Arties, or 16 of the Char B1s, and turned them into Arties. They put a, a light field howitzer on top. That's where it gets the Le FH for, Leica Feldhabitzer. And uh, that means light field artillery. And uh, he's looking for targets at the Northwest Pass, We're bringing up the mini map so we can see what's going on. There's a Panzer 38NA, the eyebrow tank, as Sophie calls them. Uh, and uh, another variation of the Hetzer chassis there. And we've got an M4, and he's dialing in carefully, working out where it's going to be, rounds out, it moves. Uh, that round lands behind it, but not by his fault, uh, because the target moved. He's fired around in blind, again the target moved. He's inching forward bit by bit, but he's got a red line now. When you get a red line, you can't shoot because it's obstruction in the way, but he fires at the M4 again. And this time he gets a kill shot. 356 hit points and his first kill of the game. Hetzer. Tier 4. Dead Hetzer. Bit of a red. Smoking. 210 hit points off that one. There's a B1. That's the chassis that was used for the BB. And he's got a T28E with the F30 gun there. That's the 85mm gun, which is pretty devastating actually. It's a premium medium that one but it's actually quite meaty very very good fun i can tell you i've got one and i love playing that okay he's trying to line up a shot but it's very difficult because he won't come forward and you can see he's got a red line most of the time when he's trying to fire at it you see there's a red line there which means the shell would impact on the top of the hill and he's looking through battle assistance see if he can put a shell into the panzer 38 but it's very difficult but a panzer t25 has gone around the edge oh my god doesn't he know that there's an enemy on his uh, left flank? Well, he must know now because he's being fired upon. And they're now exchanging fire. And the T-25 doesn't seem to realise the danger he's in. And he torment fires around him, but it's, uh, it's too late because the Panzer uh, 38 NA is already dead. But we've got a couple of targets over on the other side of the valley. Skoda T24 rounds out. Oh, it lands next to the, the Skoda. We can't see them now. They've gone... Uh, they're unsighted. Ah, oh, there's a Panzer 4D. The Stug is spotting for us in the centre. And that Panzer 4D goes down. That's the third kill. Right, there's the B1. I'm not sure we can hit that, but... We can hit this Pans, uh, P2640 as the tier 4 Italian medium dialed in, rounds out. He pulls forward a little, but that lands on the engine bay for 133 and it's tracked him. We can load faster than he can repair, rounds out. Kill shot! He got him! That was his fourth kill. There's a B1 just behind though, he's, in, he's marked the ground to tell his teammate to pull back as I'm aiming at that particular point. He fires at the B1 but the B1's got the kill. He took out the P2640 on our team. Now he's pulling back around the corner. He knows there's RT firing at him but he pulls out all the same which is a bit mad if you think about it. Round goes out and no unfortunately not on that occasion 
missed it. In fact, actually, it was a long way behind the B1, but he's reloaded. Works out where he's going, rounds out, lands in front of him, splashes him for 118. The B1's trying to get under cover now, rounds out, won't get him. No, it, unfortunately, he was just too quick to get around the corner. But we're two tanks down at the moment. The enemy is doing well. And that Covenant is pulling back because the B1 is quite a, is trying to monster him. Covenant has got an automatic cannon, which should be able to deal with a, um, a tank like that. But, uh, oh, there's a target we can hit. An SU-85B, Tier 4 Soviet tank destroyer, rounds out. And he hits him for 166. He's tracked him. He's still stationary. He hasn't used his repair kit. Rounds out. Oh, he moved. Oh! Didn't get the round out fast enough there. Should have moved faster. Fires the round out anyway. He's only got 16 rounds of HE left. Five rounds of heat and five rounds of AP. Now, that's a lot of ammunition. Ten rounds that you have to hit the target with. He hits the Panzer 3-4. 163. Now, can he kill the Panzer 3-4? Ready to shoot. Rounds out. Yes! He got him! 45 hit points. That was his fifth kill. One more, he gets the top gun. Now, there's a B1 just behind there. Now, the trouble is that the only tank that's spotting is the Hetzer. And he's a little way back. He might not be able to see it. Okay, there's a Sav M43 and we can see him. He just took out RT-67. We fire around at the Sav. And we kill him! That's the top gun. 50 hit points. I think now it's yet yeah, he's probably got the high caliber. I say that because I know that the mods I use tells me that uh, he has at the moment got it. But of course, uh, it's very unlikely he's going to be overtaken by any members on his team because most of them are dead. They are still one tank down at the moment. There's the uh, SU-85. That's the same one he hit earlier. It's gone around the corner to try and kill the Hetzer. And the Hetzer's taking damage and he's down. And so's the SU-85B. That's his seventh kill. One more, he gets the Radleys. Now that B1's backed away. But it could be that he's back around the corner to go unsighted. And then he's going to come around the corner as soon as he uh, feels free. We've got a Marder 38T moving to try and cover that approach to the cap area. Hopefully he'll get to the corner in time to spot the... Oh, no, we know where the B1 is. He's pushing the wreck. Fire the round in. It hits the rock face. Keep going. Mark the spot. And he might still be there. Is he there? Well, the round lands, but we don't see the B1. Is he still there? And no, there's an explosion directly behind the wreck. So the B1's moved on. He's now got nine rounds of HE left. He needs to conserve these because uh, it's rather a lot of uh, heat and AP ammunition. You need to get a direct hit on the target in order for those to work. It, ideally, you want to carry more HE in the Fifi than heat or um, AP. Because if you can't get a direct hit, it can be rather expensive. Right, we've got a Skoda T24 appeared in the south or south of our current position. Fires around in. No, there's nobody there. I think the Marder's going in to have a look, but the B1's gone a different route. Okay, now we're going to deal with this, uh, this Skoda. We've got bushes nearby, so that's good. So we can hide behind those. We've got a 390 meter view range, which is longer than most uh, medium tanks or heavy tanks for that matter. We're dialing in. Rounds out. Yes, kill shot. 219 hit points. That's a Radley Walters. Now we're looking for that B1. Where did he go? Well, the Marder's, the Marder's managed to make it all the way around. Oh my God, there's an IKB-103 nearby. And he's attacking our AMX-40, the duck tank. There he is. And he's only got a few hit points. He's taken out the AMX. In fact, actually, it was the enemy gorilla who got him. Our first shot misses. Reloading. The IKV's turned this way. He fires around in, but I think the IKV moved on. He's only got 11 hit points. We only need to get the shell near him to actually do the job. 
We're waiting for him to come around the corner. We can still see him. And we've got him! That is nine kills. One more. He gets the Fool's Medal. There are only two enemy left. The B1 and an enemy RT. And that enemy RT is a Grilla. Now that Grilla can probably just about reach this position from the other side of the map. But it would be difficult. It would be a maximum range. Yes, there was a round from the enemy RT. Landed just behind him. And in fact, there's the B1. He's come across the valley. But he's only got 39 hit points. So if Torment can get close, he can actually blow him straight in the face. Now that will be the time to load the heat ammunition or the AP. A shot at close range would be devastating. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Don't turn over. Don't turn over. Don't turn over. Not at this time of the game. There's the B1. We don't want to stay stationary now that the Grilla knows where we are. The B1's firing at us. He's hit the tracks. He's bounced rounds off. And there he's toast. 39 hit points. That's a fool's medal. Now, we've lost contact with the Marder because he's far on the other side of the map. And our radio doesn't extend that far. Oh, Torment just been hit by the enemy Grilla. He worked out where Torment was. He did know from uh, when Torment killed the Char B1 that uh, he was coming around that corner. So he fired a round in and splashed Torment with 39 hit points. But now I think it's time for Torment to return the favor. And you saw that round there, land there. I think that was the next round from the Grilla. There he is! Oh my god, he's close! Very close! He's manually aiming. Dialing in, making sure. Here we go. Auto aim on. Round out and kills him! That is 11 kills and wins the battle. Oh my god. <laughs> and there's an expletive from Tor Torment in the uh, chat. I'm not surprised really. I think I probably would as well. Just look at these results. It's an ace tanker for Torment 4 in the 105 FH 18B2. He also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least 5 critical hits, crew incapacitations or module damage. He got 18 in that battle. He also picked up a duelist badge for uh, taking down two tanks that did damage to him during the battle. Obviously that was the Char B1 and the Gorilla. Uh, a, a Gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. A Pools medal for getting at least 10 kills. He got 11 in total. Uh, he was only too short of getting a Racini Heroes medal. Uh, a Starks medal for uh, taking down or killing at least two enemy, surviving at least two shots from the enemy and losing two thirds of your hit points in the process. Um, or the, the shots would have lost you two-thirds of your hit points in the process. Uh, a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the battle. And lastly, a top gun for getting at least six kills. Oh my gun, that was an impressive victory that was. So, let's have a look at team scores. 2,200 hit points of damage. More than three times the highest score on the rest of his team. The T-67 managed 603 hit points. The Jagdpanzer Hetzer uh, 38T, he only managed to get 463. He, he Well, he did get four, five, uh, is it five times, five times the damage uh, of the Hetzer. That's an amazing score. Well, he even beat the highest scorer on the enemy team, 795. That was from the Gorilla, the last one he killed, and the B1 was 669. Between them, they, those two managed to get three kills. But uh, Torment managed 11 kills, more than, well, more than three times the score that they managed. And, well, only uh, five members of Torment's team actually managed to get kills in that battle. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so, yeah, very impressive indeed. So let's have a look at base XP. 1,187. Again, three times the highest score of the next member on his own team. The uh, B1 managed 430 XP. The Gorilla, 302. Uh, and just amazing that uh, he's the only one who's managed to get into four figures. All the others are um, or below 500 uh, XP in total. So he absolutely monstered that round. Let's have a look at detail. 
Well, he fired 30 rounds. He got 11 direct hits, 11 penetrations, and 8 splash. Damage of 2,200 hit points, of which 1,910 were at more than 300 meters. He received three hits during that battle. Only one was a penetration. Two were non-penetrations. The penetration one was actually from the griller, uh, which actually um, uh, splash damaged him. Uh, but the two non-penetration rounds are actually from the Char B1. And uh, he fired one into the tracks and one bounced off the body. So it shows the, the usefulness of then taking him out with an HE round. If he'd fired a heat round, it would have done the trick, but it would have been more expensive. But that's why I nearly always load my Fifi with plenty of HE ammunition and only a couple of heat rounds and maybe a couple of uh, AP. Um, he actually received three hits as a result of splash damage during that battle. The Griller actually did try and work out where he was and was pretty good about it. He blocked damage of 110 hit points. He only has 260 hit points in, in, overall. So uh, he blocked damage of 110 and took damage, some more damage from the actual enemy. Um, he spotted one enemy vehicle, that was the Griller. He damaged 12 of the enemy and he killed 11 of them. On a premium account, he earned... 49,551 credits and after repair and ammunition resupply and the ammo, the HE ammo is really cheap. So it was very, very cheap to re renew his magazine. He, he took away 45,335 credits off that battle. A very, very large score for a tier 5 RT. He received another 1,781 XP, got 712 because this is a premium vehicle. And so he took away 2,493 experience points altogether. But I think you would say that this was one of those epic rounds uh, to take a Fifi out and to fight the enemy and kill virtually everyone. Only four enemies that he didn't kill. Um, those were the ones that were um, killed by other members of his team. But he was very close to getting a Racini Heroes medal. And I think if he'd been a bit more lucky with some of his shots, I think he may have done it. He may have done it. But uh, if you were impressed by this round, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video. And hopefully it'll be as good as this one.